Hi everyone, before we get started today, I actually did want to talk a little bit about my makeup. So this is not a sponsored post, but I really love the new makeup brand called Our Darling, and I am wearing their signature eyeshadow palette. It's fantastic. It's a cooler toned, gothy type of palette inspired by the Victorian morning era. It looks great, and I am totally in love with it, and I'm obsessed, and I think it's perfect. I also wanted to show off my Lively Ghost tin. Lively Ghost is a great friend of mine, and she makes the best tins. This one is a candelabra, of course, Haunted Mansion inspired. I will add the links below so that way you guys can check them out. Again, not a sponsored post, just love them. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the Haunted Mansion as well as the Haunted Mansion collection that's coming out soon. Located in New Orleans Square, this gorgeous ride is loved by many, especially the goths and spooky fanatics. Its iconic structure has so many beautiful items to view in the queue. The Pet Cemetery, its New Orleans style mansion, and of course, its gorgeous interior. Whenever I go on the ride, I always find something new to look at. On August 9, 1969, the doors of the Haunted Mansion first opened. The Haunted Mansion was the first major attraction to open without direct supervision from Walt Disney himself. He did, however, have a hand in early concepts, but unfortunately was never able to see the final production. Before I start talking about the collection, I do want to talk about a little bit of a fun fact. I know that the Haunted Mansion doesn't actually have an official storyline. But this is the rumored story that I've heard, again, just from cast members that I was friends with before. So, if you actually look on the Haunted Mansion, you'll notice that there's a wind dial and it's in the shape of a sailboat. This sailboat actually points directly to the Pirates of the Caribbean. From what I've heard, again, this is not fact, this is just a rumor that I've heard from people who actually did work at the park. So the story goes that you actually start on the Pirates of the Caribbean. And the Pirates of the Caribbean is actually the story of a captain named Captain Blood. And this was all before the Jack Sparrow stuff was added. But I Don't get me wrong, I love the Jack Sparrow stuff. But again, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story that I've heard. So when you get on the ride, you pass by the little shack that has the guy playing the banjo. And it's supposed to hint at the of Captain Blood. He's grown older and you're diving into the memory of how he was as a pirate. So then you go through the entire story and... Again, you kind of see how his adventures were as a pirate, and then as the story goes, once he was tired of being a pirate, he actually fell in love with a woman. And this woman was someone that he kind of gave up pirating for. He wanted to settle down, and he fell in love with her. So guess what he did with all his loot? He bought a mansion, or in some cases, he built a mansion. So this woman that he married, she was wonderful. She was everything that he had always dreamed of. But her one weird condition was that he was not allowed in the attic. So one day when he was actually searching around in his mansion, he decided to go against his wife's wishes and go into the attic, which is where he found wedding photos of her with different men, all these different things, all these jewelry, all, these, all of it. And when he went to go confront his wife, guess what? She hanged him. Hence why he's the hanging man in the haunted mansion right when we're in the stretching room. So the story is that he actually married Lady Hatchaway and she got rid of him and got to keep the mansion for herself. So that's the story that I know. Of course, there's no official story. Nothing is fact about what I've said. Um, I just think it's a little bit of a fun history and I really do think that the story is interesting and I do wish that Disney would actually kind of stick to that storyline and maybe create something official for the mansion. Another fun fact, I know that Phantom Manor, the haunted mansion that's in France, is actually one of the only few haunted mansions that actually do have a storyline. If you haven't heard about that, let me know if you want me to talk about it. It's actually pretty cool. Weird though, but it's cool. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the haunted mansion collection. I thought it would be really fun to kind of do a summer wing type of thing, and I miss Disney so much, and I am really sad because I was an annual pass holder and now that they don't have the passes, kind of sucks. But I heard a rumor that they might be bringing them back. I don't know when, but here's to hoping. So the first tea that I decided to make a blend was of the Ghost Toast. So the Ghost Toast, I already love the name. Um, it's iconic. It's from the ride itself. And I decided to make something that felt warm and inviting because the mansion itself is supposed to be spooky. So the Ghost Toast is a gothic brew that is a decadent blend of fine Earl Grey, orange, 
lemon, nutmeg, and star anise. Expect this tea when greeted by the mansion's ghost host. It will warm your soul from its ghostly chill. So the inspiration for this one really was to kind of get an idea of what they would serve at the mansion. I did have a similar tea once when I went to a tea house and I totally fell in love with it. It was an Earl Grey with nutmeg and star anise and it just kind of gave it a chai flavor without it being an official chai. And I thought that that's totally perfect and it's something that I would think that the Haunted Mansion would serve. So that was the first one that I came up with. The second tea that I came up with for this collection is the Lady Hatchaway tea blend. Of course, I had to choose something kind of wedding or bridal inspired. So this next one is a wedding inspired brew, a unique blend of delicate jasmine black tea and wild corn flowers. This tea was found preserved inside of a hat box labeled Lady Hatchaway. What I love about this one is that the jasmine black tea is actually something pretty hard to find. You normally will see jasmine green tea, but jasmine black tea was actually something that I personally love even more. Um, my aunt, she used to do missionary work in Indonesia and they actually had a jasmine black tea, um, I guess like in a carton and she bought me some and it was amazing. And that was like the only place I could find jasmine black tea. So I decided I'd make my own. And I figured jasmine is a beautiful, delicate flower. It smells amazing and it tastes amazing. So I figured that would be a really cool wedding style tea that I would imagine that Lady Hatchaway probably would have had at her wedding. And the wild corn flowers are blue. So it kind of gives that ghostly aura that she has in the ride, which I think is kind of fun. Mind you, I forgot to mention, all of these are actually topped with sprinkles pertaining to each idea. So again, the ghost host has green and purple sprinkles to kind of match the interior of the Haunted Mansion. Lady Hatchway has pink sprinkles with a single rose in the center. So this next one is the Stretching Room Tea Blend. This full stirring blue is a ghastly blend of black tea, black currants, rosemary, French vanilla, and cinnamon chips, evoking a mystifying atmosphere. So what I love about this one is, again, this is another thing that I kind of figured with the foyer probably would have as a tea blend. Like, of course, the ghost host would give you the nutmeg tea, but this is kind of another tea that I thought that they would have available at the mansion. I like the idea of having black currants. Um, it's a different type of berry. It's sweet, it's dark and sticky, but like kind of jam-like and I love it. Um, French vanilla, also a really lovely flavor. Rosemary to kind of give it that spooky aura. Um, and the vanilla kind of balances that out as well. Cinnamon because Cinnamon's always good inside tea. <laughs> and this one is actually topped with sprinkles that kind of match the wallpaper in the stretching room. So a little bit of a nod to that. And I think it's really cool. Last but not least on the drinkable item, I have the Ghoulish Delight Hot Chocolate. This one was really fun. I really like this one because I kind of wanted it to feel like the entire atmosphere of the Haunted Mansion, New Orleans Square, and... I'm really excited about how this one turned out. It's a really unique flavor. It's just really cool. So the Ghoulish Delight Hot Chocolate is a white chocolate and a dark chocolate. And what I put inside was nutmeg, cinnamon, blackberries, and rosemary. So I chose dark chocolate to give an aura of foreboding. White chocolate for Ghoulish Delight. Blackberries for Graveyard Jamborees. Rosemary for Deathly Still Air and cinnamon and nutmeg for spirits materializing. I will have a bundle of everything, so that way it'll be at a discounted price and you can try every single item. And I'll also have them individually if there's something that you're allergic to or if there's something that you don't really want to try. I just want it to be something that y'all can bring home and that it could be something fun to have, especially since Disneyland has been closed for over a year and I know that not many of us can actually go to the parks right now. On to the next items, I actually decided to make perfume for each drink. So of course the first one that we're going to go with is the Ghost Host. The Ghost Host is actually a mimic of the actual tea. So the scent itself has Earl Grey, nutmeg, cinnamon, all that fun stuff. And it really smells good. It has this really warm tart like scent. It's almost as if you walked into the manor and someone was baking like lemon tarts and like has nutmeg in the crust and someone has Earl Grey ready for you. 
So for Lady Hatchway, hers is just a little bit different. This one actually is supposed to smell like a bouquet of roses, but also soot and wooden floorboards. Um, I think that one's really cool because it kind of gives the atmosphere of the attic. It also has a powdery after scent, which I really like, which is very ghostly. And I think that's very fitting for her. The stretching room smells really good too. So this one's kind of a sweet scent, but it's kind of musky. It's got the scent of vanilla and oak, black um, currant. And it also just kind of has a potpourri smell. And I think that's really cool. And it's kind of got this autumnal, I guess if that's how you say it, <laughs> um, scent to it. And it just also has a linen scent, which is really cool. It feels like you are in a drawing room or a parlor or something. And I think that that's exactly what I wanted it to smell like. Now, my favorite one is actually the Ghoulish Delight perfume. I wanted this one to smell like the outside of the entire New Orleans square. So it's not exact, but I definitely took some liberties with the scent. So again, I'm really excited about this one. So one of the notes is actually mint julep because you can buy mint julep in New Orleans Square. And it's crazy if you don't, because that's one of my favorite things to get at Disneyland. Um, the next scent that I put was Spanish moss because of course there's Spanish moss everywhere. I actually, for my wedding, uh, I had asked my florist for a ton of Spanish moss because I have always loved how it looked in New Orleans Square. Um, my entire bouquet was actually Haunted Mansion inspired, so yeah. Then the next scent is Rosemary. I really chose Rosemary a lot for this collection because it kind of gives it that haunting scent and flavor. And I think it matches the Haunted Mansion really well. And the last but not least scent is churros. I was super excited to actually put a churro-like scent into this because it makes it different. It's got this clean scent, but then you have that brown sugar cinnamony scent that just smells like you walk past a churro cart. And I feel like that's so Disney. And that's why I'm super excited about this one. It's a very different smell. Um, it doesn't smell exactly like Disneyland, but it really, to me, has the heart of it. And I think that I'm the most proud of that one because it feels the most like New Orleans Square. Just like right next to where the Haunted Mansion is when you're standing in line. And it's kind of a nice summery day, so everything just smells nice and all the roses are in bloom. But yeah, and then you pass that churro cart and you're like, shoot, I gotta get myself a churro because it is a badge of honor to get a churro at Disneyland. <laughs> So yeah, I hope you're excited about this collection as much as I am. Um, this one definitely was a labor of love. Um, yeah, Haunted Mansion has always been my favorite ride. Um, and I'm glad that I'm finally able to make something about it and I'm able to share it with people who love it as much as I do. So again, I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned and make sure you sign up at petalsandpoison.com to stay up to date with all the latest news. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you want me to talk about in the comments below. Thanks.